Hello everyone, this is Fernando Briones and I intend today to show you how to design a racing track like the one that you are that you have in front of you, the one that you are watching. Those racing tracks as you see are made by the use of tangencies, tangencies uh, between circumferences, t lines tangent to circumferences and this structure leads to the design of a racetrack like this here okay so in order to to start doing this one what we are going to do is using a dynamic uh, a dynamic geometry program which is called GeoGebra if you are using Max it is by it is in, in, in this menu here so we are going to start the program nice and we are going to get rid first of all of the algebra column and also both axes and options I'm going to change the the language of course into English okay so first we're going to start drawing which is called the start finish straight line okay and we are going to draw both circumferences which are going to be tangent to the straight line. In order to do that we are going to add two free points. That one is no good. It has to be attached to the line. Here it is. Make sure here yeah, those both lines are free. Like this, like that other. Nice. And those both points are going also to be the tangency points to my both circumferences. That means they need to have a radius perpendicular to that straight line. So in order to do that I'm going to add the center of the circumference and it's going to end precisely on that tangency point. As you see the circumference has a radius which is perpendicular to the line which is tangent at the same time to the circumference. Nice. So we're going to do exactly the same thing but the other way around. That is we're going to add a radius now we're going to add, which is going to be the the next tangency point, and we are going to draw a perpendicular line that passes precisely through that tangency point. Now I'm going to add a free point attached to that straight line. Make sure it is like that. Another perpendicular line to the future tangency point and our next circumference like this. Nice. So we will have here a turn which gets into a straight line then it turns right another followed by another straight line and here we can do something rather new which is a double turn or as the French says a chicane. In order to do that we need both circumferences tangent to each other that is, both centers of our both circumferences need to be joined, they need to be lined up. So we are going to do it by the use of a ray, which is a straight line with a start, but that doesn't have a an, an end. Okay? So again we're going to add which is going to be the center of our next circumference and look out, it has to finish precisely on the intersection of that straight line that are joining those both centers. Okay? Okay, nice. We can move it. Nice. So here we're going to have that double turn. Okay, nice. And what I intend now is to draw another straight line that goes down and it's going to be somehow linked to the um, the final straight line that gets into that final curve and then the start finish line. So in order to do that I'm going to add two radiuses here one and here another and the correspondent perpendicular lines here one and here the other Okay. Look, those both straight lines are now crossing, like cutting each other with in this vertex, in this vertex. What I intend now to do is a 
circumference which is perfectly tangent to those both straight lines and how do I do that? By the use of a what's called an angle bisector. The angle bisector is a straight line that divides that angle into two equal angles. So all the points of that angle bisector are equidistant to those both straight lines. That leads us to the fact that it's going to be the center of the circumference tangent to those both is going to be here on that angle bisector. So that means that if I draw a perpendicular line like this, okay, I do not want it to intersect with any other thing that is my uh, angle bisector. Here in this intersection I'm going to be able to draw a circumference tangent to those both lines. Okay, I need the other tangency points here, there, there it is. Okay. Now I will be able to draw the proper arcs and the straight lines with a wider, bolder, you know, outline. In order to do that, all the arcs that I'm going to draw, they need to be counter clock. Okay, remember that in order to not losing too much time. Again here, counter clock that is from left to right. Nice. And here precisely the opposite from right to left. And finally this one here. Nice. Here I've drawn already all the curves of my track. Now I'm going to add the segments which are going to be the straight parts of my racing track here and there. As you see, now we have a beautifully smooth uh, structure which is going to be our racing track. Nice! Now we are going to export this racetrack to Inkscape in order to be able to draw the, the racetrack itself with a little bit more of detail. And in order to do that, we go to export, we select the second option, graphics view as a picture, PNG, APS and that stuff. And inside that menu we are going to uh, choose scalable vector graphics, which is the extension of Inkscape. Sca uh, we save it. Where do we save it? Here on this folder, which is called Racing Track, and I'm going to call it Circuit well, circuit 1. Okay, save it. Now I can minimize this program because I'm going to open a new one which is, as I told you before, Inkscape. Okay, wait patiently until the program opens. Here we are. Nice. So, now next step is going to be the opening of my circuit which was on the folder racing track and here it is as you see with the extension SVG. Nice! So right now everything is grouped together that can be undone by the use of this icon so you see we have several many different lines which I am going to delete, I'm going to get rid of all which is not, strictly speaking, part of the uh, racing track itself. I'm going to delete all the, the dots, okay, being, that's it, nice, being patient in, in doing so, here is still a, a dot left. Okay, now what I intend to do, I think there are a couple more here, nice. So what do I intend now is uh, changing the width of the racing track. And in order to do that, I'm going to select it all. I go to Trajecto, I'm going to convert it into, uh, into border, to boundary and Afterwards, I'm going to join them, okay? And by doing so, I'm going to open the st 
style menu here and I'm going to change and I'm going to add style and I'm going to add, I don't know, 40 pixels could be nice yes and I'm going to convert it again into a, into a path okay that means now I can change the color which is asphalt and I'm going to add again a new a new outline but in this case it doesn't have to be that big anymore okay nice as you see I have a very smooth design of a racing track and two steps remember the first one was the use of a geometry program like Hebra and afterwards what we did is exporting it and editing into Inkscape and that's all thank you for listening and let's see us and in, uh, in in next videos